Hi YouTube world, I am back again with another bag review. Today it's going to be the Christian Dior vanity bag. Uh, I'll go over the size, the weight, what fits in there, what are my thoughts, but the vanity bag trend started around 2020 that I've noticed and the trend has been going for a number of years. Uh, a lot of other of the houses there, um, such as Louis Vuitton, Chanel, they all have come out with vanity bags and Christian Dior has a more iconic one, I feel like, because it is very unique instead of having um, a logo mania that is plastered all over like the Gucci one or perhaps the Louis Vuitton one. This one actually you can use as a regular bag. So I think this one, um, it's got a very high end look. It's not as durable just because it's not a printed or a coated canvas like the Louis Vuitton one, but um, the Christian Dior vanity bag has been used straight up like a cosmetic or skincare bag as opposed to a regular bag, whereas this one is designed specifically <clears throat> to have straps, as you can see the day rings, and I'll um, take the strap out so that you can take a look in a second here. But um, just to go over the, the size dimensions of the bag, this is going to measure at 7.5 inches. It is going to, the height of the bag is five inches, and then the depth of the bag is going to be four inches. Let's take a look at the weight of the bag. With my scale. So the weight of the bag is going to be 14 ounces just approximate, right? 14 ounces, um, so it's a really light bag, consider that it is completely leather, and they're, um, it's under a pound, which is kind of crazy, because I feel like all leather bags are over a pound, no matter how small it is or how large it is, it's always over a pound. So for this to come in under a pound, I, I really like that because, I, like I said before, I have shoulder issues, so the weight of the bag is very important to me, which I'll weigh again after I put some of my uh, wallets, sunglasses, etc. in there so that you can see what fits. So just to open it up, um, you can see the outside with the lambskin leather. There's the canage quilted. Everything is really puffy, so it feels really nice, and it's very soft. And then this is embroidered. So the wear and tear has been, uh, has done very well, but I'll get into what I think about the bag in a second here. But taking a look at the inside, you can see the microfiber that's in there, comes with a strap, and then it's got one pocket where you can see the tag um, of when it's made and the, uh, the serial code. And then here is another pocket. So if you want to, you know, go without a wallet or a card holder, you can easily put your cards in here and make it kind of like a wallet on change idea, right? Um, here's the strap. The strap is relatively long. I can wear this crossbody with the last hole. And for reference, I am 5'8", and I'm like a size 10, usually the US size 10, so that gives you a reference of how this would sit on a 5'8 frame. And usually when I put this as a crossbody, it sits right at my hip bone. So let's take a look at what fits. Using the same, um, kind of like our benchmark, right? Our benchmark of the same items that I've been using with uh, the APC review and then my stod uh, earlier in my previous video. So I'm just gonna put it in here. And then I've got my dress up your purse card holder. Here's an iPhone 10. I'll just kind of slip it in here. And then here is my Dior sunglasses case with a sun pair of sunglasses. So this is going to be triangular shaped. But again, if you have like a regular um, sunglasses. Again, I use this as a catch-all, but really this was designed to be a sunglasses case, so you can use this as reference. But I can put it back in here. Got to play a little bit of Tetris here. And then you put your sunglasses case right in there. It fits perfectly, and then you just tuck everything in, and you kind of just close it up. 
You can actually fit more stuff in there, but I don't recommend it just because, yes, there's room here, but then when you open it up, things could fall out. So I don't recommend doing that. So let's take a look at what the weight would look like after putting all of the, um, my essentials in there. So here, I'll put it in like this. I'm going to toss the strap in there. So it comes out to be about two pounds and four ounces. So still very uh, light in terms of the weight. The only thing I can think of is the strap, right? It's relatively thin. Um, so that might dig into your shoulder if you have anything that is heavier in there than two pounds. So um, on the website, you can also see that the Christian Dior um, strap there you have other ones that you can buy that are extremely pretty, but also really uh, unreasonably expensive for, I think they're going for $1,200, but you can customize it so that um, you, you can use different strap. I personally haven't done that just because I like leather straps anyways, but if you were to look for a chain strap, like maybe switch it up with your Louis Vuitton one, um, and move it over here like a chain strap from, you know, the favorite or from um, maybe your Porsche Mortis or, or whatnot. It might add to the weight of the back if that is important to you. So I like using leather strap because it just stays on my shoulders nicer as opposed to chain straps. And it doesn't add too much weight to the actual bag itself. So talking a little about the actual... Um, usage wear and tear i will tell you that this has worn very well um so you can see the back of the purse here there is no um balls kind of wear and tear and balling up like a, a sweater would just because um i've been using this crossbody so it's been rubbing against my jeans it's been rubbing rubbing against and i most of the time i wear belts with my jeans or my jean shorts so it has been rubbing very often as I'm wearing it crossbody. And look at that. There is no wear and tear. It is gorgeous. There is no scratches. And I am very clumsy. I like to run into anything, even though the, 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 the wall or the stair or the handle is not even close to me or the corner of the table. I'm not even close to it. I somehow managed to go ahead and bump against it um, and hurt myself or you hurt my bag, right? But you can see... This has stand up to my clumsiness and has worn very well. The, uh, the thought that I thought about this bag is everything you heard about vanity bags is true. How to open this and doing it one hand, and you can see I'm struggling here, right? Um, everything you heard about it is true. It is a pain in the ass to get in and out of. But I'm also the kind of person that don't really go into my bag, you know, six times an hour or, you know, 20 times a day or anything. I have my cards on me, credit cards, rewards card, gift cards and whatnot. I actually upload all of my credit cards to my phone. So I most of the time pay with my phone anyways. And like most people, my phone is super glued to my hand. So I can just easily swipe down and then pay um, via, um, you know, Android Pay or Google Pay or Apple Pay, whatever it is, right? So I don't really need to access my bag very often. The only time I would access my bag is to, you know, grab my sunglasses or put away my sunglasses um, and then also to grab my lipstick or maybe a hand sanitizer. So I don't really access my bag that often. So to me, that is not a problem. But you do need two hands to open this. And for me, if I'm in a hurry, I kind of just rip this thing open, access it, and then opening it is not as bad. Closing it is what's tough. So you got to kind of like rip it together somehow like this. And so to me, it's still tolerable. So at the end of the day, if you have to think about your functionality, your lifestyle, how do you access this? and see if it fits with your daily uh, usage. So let's talk a little bit about the pricing of this bag. So I purchased this bag off of Rebag. My, I'll probably make another re, uh, video on my thoughts on Rebag, but this was listed for $2,005. There were other colors, but I really like red, and I might have mentioned before that I like to dress very neutral. Lots of black, not, lots of... Um, 
beige, lots of neutral colors. So when it comes to my bags, I don't mind a pop of red. I don't mind a pop of, you know, brighter colors. I, I tend to stay away from black bags because it kind of just blends into what I wear and I don't like that, right? I love my bags. I kind of want it to have some contrast. So there was a black one for 2,500. There was another beige one for about 2,800. So I got lucky because I love red bags and I don't have that many red bags as I have sold some of them. So I wanted another red bag and this one came in at $2,005. The thing with red rebag, if you're not familiar with them, I'm gonna put this down, it's kind of heavy. Um, the thing you, about rebag that you, if you're not familiar is that they do trade-ins, right? It's not like fashion file. Fashion file, you straight up just buy the bag. When it comes to rebag, you can actually opt to use their Claire Trade, which is a program that estimates what they will give you for trading in a, a couple bags. So I traded in four things. I traded in a Gucci card case for 285, a Gucci Marmont um, crossbody, which is also red, which I decided to let go of in replacement of this. Um, so that got me about $725. I also had a Burberry, Cansberry, for $525 and then a LV uh, favorite strap that is Vichetta letter that they were willing to give me $250 in terms of trading credit. So that totaled up to be about $17.85 and then I also had a coupon um, for 10%. So that all added up and then I used some points as well. So that all added up <clears throat> and Basically, I did not have to pay anything out of pocket. Yes, I had to give up four items, but I think it was worth it because those are the items I was ready to let go of anyways. So for me to get a trading credit, um, that was worth it for me to kind of downsize my closet as well as uh, go ahead and get the bag that I really wanted. So there was no taxes that were needed to pay because there, there was no exchange of money or cash, so to speak. Um, we're just doing a trade-in. So I avoided uh, around what? If you're thinking about 10% 10, 10 uh, tax, let's just say it's about $200 that I saved if I were to purchase this online from Dior. Dior has these listed as $3,000, um, brand new. And the condition I got this in, it comes with a dust bag, as you can see. The condition of this was basically brand new. Um, so to me, it's kind of like going to the Dior store and purchasing. It didn't come with like a card, unfortunately, but it also didn't come with a box, but I saved a lot of money <clears throat> over a thousand dollars just by purchasing it uh, in like new condition as opposed to from Dior. But I forego the box and all of the pretty packaging, which is, you know, at the end of the day is not really important to me. But um, for Dior, it's listed at $3,000 plus tax, so that would come out to be $3,300 if you are looking at a 10% tax rate. So overall, I am very happy with this bag. If I, is this a for ba forever bag? I don't know. I don't think it will be because the vanity trend might end in five to 10 years, but I'm okay with that. To me, this is a very trendy bag and I en will enjoy using it for um, the time being, hopefully for the next four to five years. And then maybe I'll look to trade it in with Rebag, but, um, or perhaps sell it on Poshmark um, or some sort of consignment store where um, I can get, at least get some of my um, original purchase price, so to speak, trade in um, back. Or maybe I'll use Rebag again and trade it in for something else. Hopefully this was helpful, Make helps you decide if you want to purchase a Christian Dior vanity. Hopefully this was helpful. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I will have more reviews like this, but I'll also start to cover other topics that will help you adult a little bit easier. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can live your best life and not have to pay retail. So thank you everybody. I will see you next time.